What's up guys, Alan Brock here, and if you're part of the YouTube film community, uh, more specifically the uh, large format film community, you'll be aware that Ben Horn, uh, the past two weeks, has released, uh, as part of his My Photographic Journey series, uh, some videos showing some of his high resolution drum scans uh, from 8x10 and then most recently from his 4x5 camera. And since I've pretty much stolen everything else from him, I said, why not do the exact same video he did one more time um, and show some of my scans. But in all seriousness, I think this is going to be a good comparison. He showed his drum scans. I've actually never had any of my film drum scan. I use an Epson V700, a flatbed scanner, and I have been using this for about a year and a half. And when I first bought the, uh, or was researching buying the scanner, you read all kinds of online reviews and they're not that favorable. Uh, they'll tell you about the scanner's limited dynamic range, um, its inability to get sharp images, uh, and most of the time they're comparing that to a drum skin. Now, in my opinion, that's a lot like uh, comparing a point and shoot camera to a medium format digital back. They serve different purposes. When I was first buying this, can uh, this scanner, I was a little bit hesitant because of all the bad reviews. So my thinking was, well, I'll just buy this scanner to get uh, previews of my images and then if I have something I want uh, full resolution, I can do a drum scan of those. But I was actually very pleasantly surprised by the quality of what comes out of this scanner. And I think it'll be a good opportunity to watch Ben's videos uh, compare what a drum scan of an 8x10 uh, sheet of film can do versus what flatbed scanners can do with uh, 4x5 film. Now, like I said, I have the V700. Uh, they also make a V750. And I'm pretty sure the only difference between the two is the fact that the V750 can do wet mounting, which uh, I think helps maybe get a little bit sharper image. I know it helps with dust, uh, but as far as the actual scanning lens and the mechanism, I think that's all the same. They have now come out with a V800 and 850 series. And again, I think the scanning hardware internally is identical to the 700 series of scanners. The only difference is the 800 series uses an LED light, I believe, uh, that gives you a little bit faster warm up time. When you're first starting the 700 scanners, it takes a few minutes for the light inside to uh, warm up. But uh, other than that, I think that's the only difference. So I'm gonna show you uh, in Photoshop some high resolution scans that I've done strictly from the uh, V700 series. And I believe that will give you a pretty good idea about whether or not this scanner is for you. Uh, again, I was pleasantly surprised by it. One thing I'll add before we look at my high resolution 4x5 scans is that this may not be ideal for roll film, particularly 35 millimeter. I have scanned some of that and I'll show you an image of black and white uh, of my daughter, but it's more difficult to keep flat um, and it's just not the best for such a small uh, surface area of film. Now I do use the supplied um, the supplied film holders both for roll film and for 4x5 film. That's another area online where you're going to see bad reviews of this scanner and I will tend to agree if you have any curl in roll film these uh, plastic scanners, plastic film holders I'll break mine out here. Probably should have done this beforehand. And this one actually has film in it. Um, so these plastic film holders are kind of flimsy filling. Um, so if you have any kind of curl to your film, they're not going to be the best. But if you flatten your film or if you're using sheet film like these holders, I've really found them to be um, okay. They're, they're going to give you good enough quality. But let's get into it, see what these scans look like, and I uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, this first image I'll show you will look very familiar if you've seen Ben's first video, and that's because he did his of Subway, and obviously this is Subway. 
So it's going to be a very good direct comparison about what the Epson V700 can do as well as just the sheer power of 8x10 film when drum scan. There is really nothing else in photography that can touch that. Uh, but before I get into uh, going in and looking at this image 100%, let me just show you the file size here. Now I scanned this at in the scanner 3200 dpi. And the scanner's literature says it will go up to 6400 dpi, but really, once you go beyond 3200, you're not really gaining anything in actual resolution. You're just making your file size unnecessarily large. So 3200 is about the maximum that I would maximum resolution I would scan it at, and that's going to give me an image uh, once I've cropped out the film edges an image of 14,700 by 11,500. And if you printed that at 300 pixels per inch, it's gonna give you an image size of just under 50 by 40. Now, just by looking at the numbers, that actually compares very favorably to what uh, Ben's drum scan was for his four by five image. However, in practice, the flatbed scanner is going to give you a little bit softer image overall. I would, uh, for this particular image, or really all 4x5 film that's flatbed scanned, I would never print it at a 40x50. The largest I would go is 30 by 40 and I actually have printed at that size with really good results, but don't be fooled by these numbers. I wouldn't print that large just because of a little bit of inherent softness that comes with the flatbed scan. So that's the image size. Now let's go ahead and look at this image at 100% and show you how sharp it is as well as um, showing you that 4x5 flatbed scan is good but it can't really hold a candle to what a solid 8x10 image that's been drum scanned. So I've got my navigator up here in the upper right and let's just go ahead and zoom in at this on 100%. But before I do that, uh, one thing. Now, Ben went over how he used, uh, I think, front camera movements to basically have a more or less flat plane of focus from the foreground down here all the way to about the mid of the back wall glow here. Now, based on my, uh, the filter holder on my camera, I'm really unable to use uh, front camera movements with my 90 millimeter lens and a polarizer. And I shot this with my 90 millimeter lens, which is equivalent to 28 millimeters in uh, the 35 millimeter film format. But if I use any kind of front camera movements, I get some serious vignetting and my camera doesn't have enough rear movements to make that uh, plane of focus go from the foreground uh, flat to the background back here. So what I did is basically left the both camera standards parallel and upright. And I placed my plane of focus about one third into the scene. And then I stopped my lens down to f45 and uh, shot this is i think about a five and a half minute exposure so that's kind of the details behind the shot so let's see what we've got at 100 percent here so we'll zoom in all right so we're already uh, we're all the way to 100 percent here now this area right in here it looks a little bit soft but that's because uh, there's water running over it now you'll see we've got pretty good detail in the leaves back here. And then we'll go to the back wall. We're starting to get a little bit soft here, a little bit softer here, simply because it's the furthest away from my, uh, from my, my focal point. But overall, not too bad. Now again, it's not really going to touch what an 8x10 a sheet of film can do drum scanned, but for a flatbed scan, that's pretty sharp. Let's take a look at these leaves in the foreground here and just kind of scroll through those, give you an idea of what the sharpness uh, from this scanner can do. 
and you'll see you've got little twigs down here that you can see so it's pretty sharp now one thing that may not show up too well in the YouTube video but is obvious in the uh, when you're looking at it at 100% is in these leaves you've got some digital noise and that is actually noise it's not film grain like was apparent in Ben's drum scans and the reason for this is that to get an acceptably sharp image from a flatbed scan you do have to go through quite a bit of sharpening and my sharpening method for flatbed scanning is I set the scanner to sharpen a low amount and then once I get it in Photoshop I open a high pass filter and I scan it or I uh, run that high pass filter at about four pixels I won't do it here but I found that for 4 by 5 film doing it at about four pixels gets it acceptably sharp for areas of high detail now what that's going to do is place quite a bit of noise let this cancel so what that's going to do is place quite a bit of digital noise in areas that don't have detail. So these leaves that are mostly just solid yellow, you're going to have some noise in there, but it's going to make the edges really sharp. So again, just scrolling around the image, uh, let's look down here, this side at 100%. I mean that's pretty sharp that is definitely beyond what I expected from a flatbed scan especially after reading the online reviews of it so that is a pretty close comparison uh, pretty direct comparison to what Ben's film can do again nothing can hold a candle to what 8x8 8 by, 8 by 10 film drum scan is capable of but really I think this holds its own as far as a $700 scanner goes and well actually I think they're much cheaper than that now so again I think it was a really good investment okay so the second image I'm going to show you here was taken in the Narrows on Velvia 50 and this is actually one of my favorite locations in the Narrows it's a spot uh, that when I first saw an image of it convinced me that I needed to visit Zion uh, for the first time. Just an unbelievable, this alcove catches a ton of reflected light in the afternoon. Uh, just a wide open space with these cottonwoods back here. Uh, so I really, really wanted to get this image. So let's see how Velvia 50 shows up when it's uh, scanned in the V700. Now, the first thing I noticed about this as we zoom in here, now in the narrows, you get all these flash floods that uh, will kind of really wear away the banks. You'll have uh, several areas of land in the narrows, but you can see back here how this has been eroded. And so the National Park Service will go by and go through and put signs on these areas telling you not to hike. Uh, in order to kind of hopefully let this area restore itself. So if we zoom in to 100%, you can see that one of these signs that's pretty clearly readable, uh, at least when I'm looking at it, it says area closed. If you scroll to the right here, uh, you can see uh, there's a little kind of cross through a boot there. Uh, cross red cross through people hiking I think there's one more sign to the left uh, that one's not as readable but really again the detail that the scanner captured was really pretty amazing now if you look in the leaves here you'll see it's pretty it, the sharpness is okay now this is getting pretty far away from where I focused so let me zoom back out again same as with subway I shot this with a 90 millimeter lens both standards upright focused one-third of the way in the scene so my focal point is these rocks right here and if I zoom in again to hundred percent and let's take a look at these rocks 
those are pretty sharp. You can see individual leaves there. I mean, that is really, really sharp. These little pebbles down here are really sharp. As you go move further away from that, this wall back here, you'll start to lose some of that sharpness. Now, it's not, um, it's not noticeable in print uh, if you keep your print size reasonable. Again, no larger than 30 by 40. But when you're looking at it at 100%, you'll start to see that, uh, that sharpness fall off just a little bit. Now, again, if you zoom in at 100%, you're going to see some noisy areas. That's not film grain. That is actually digital noise brought on by the sharpening that you have to do to get uh, acceptable sharpness from this scanner. Now, this image is really not edited at all. I don't have it, I don't have any of the layers. Uh, I don't save it in layers because I edit very destructively actually. Uh, these huge image files really slow down my computer so I'll add a layer and then flatten, add a layer and flatten. Not the best way to edit but uh, that's how I have to do it. But really the only editing that was done to this is first Fuji gives or Velvia gives a pretty nasty blue cast to white water. So I meticulously went through and masked off all the white water and then took away that blue cast. Um, the next thing I did was when I did my sharpening, again, these areas of water, the white water, and then the deeper green water to the lower left here, uh, those areas of low texture if I were to leave those sharpened, they would get really, really noisy. So I masked out the sharpening there and you can imagine how much time that took. Um, it was very time consuming. The only real, I would say, editing or altering to the image I did was this was actually slightly overexposed. So I just opened up a curves layer and pulled it down uh, just a little bit to give a proper exposure. But other than that, this is, pretty straight from the scanner so it gives you a good idea of what this scanner can do. We'll go up here to the top because this is the furthest area away from my focal point and again the focus uh, just kind of softens a bit nothing too distracting and I actually have this image printed 30 by 40 in my work office and when I said earlier I wouldn't print 40 by 50 what I'm talking about with acceptable printing is like typical photographers who stick their nose up against the glass to view it. That's my definition of acceptable sharpness. So you can print larger if your viewing distance is going to be further away. But um, again, the biggest I would go for a, uh, a sheet of 4x5 film is printed 30 by 40 Okay, so the last image I want to show you was taken on uh, 4x5 Ilford Delta 100. And this was taken from atop Angel's Landing looking north. This area back in here, that's actually uh, where the narrows start. I want to say this was probably taken around sometime between 10 and 11 in the morning. I wanted uh, the sun at an angle that would cast shadows down into the canyon kind of give it a sense of depth and then we went on a cloudy day so that I would have um, you know some interesting clouds and blue sky to uh, really complete the image here so let's zoom in on this and right away you're going to notice a big difference in black and white film and color film now the black and white film is going to seem much much grainier and I'm pretty sure this is just the nature of black and white film, the silver uh, grains in black and white film, I think show through much more uh, than in color film. Now, there's a chance it could be, I developed my own black and white film. I'm you know, pretty careful with developing technique and uh, temperature of my chemicals, um, but there's a chance it could be that. It's obviously not as closely monitored as a lab does with color film. But honestly, I believe it's just the nature of, uh, of black and white film. But the first thing that stood out in my mind when I was looking at this image under the loop is even though it's more grainy, 
standing atop Angel's Landing, same thing using my 90 millimeter lens. And I actually checked this on Google Earth. This is the final bus stop uh, in, in Zion Canyon. This is the Temple of Sinawava, and then you start uh, back here. If you're hiking to the Narrows, there's a mile paved sidewalk that goes back up into the Narrows there. But if you ride the shuttle bus or if you're driving, this is the last stop. And when I checked it on Google Earth, it's a mile, it's 1.1 miles away from the top of Angel's Landing. And you can very clearly see there are two shuttle buses parked there. There are three vehicles in the parking lot, perhaps a fourth there. And if you go down just a little bit, there's a bus on its way there. So really, really uh, amazing detail. It's a little bit more grainy than the color film, but I was, was pretty shocked that that uh, was able to capture that from essentially a wide angle lens. Let's go up to the navigator here, and another thing I want to show you is uh, maybe a half mile away or so, there's a location called Scouts Lookout, and very clearly you can see people right here. It looks like this guy's either taking a selfie or uh, more likely taking a picture of the canyon. There's a group of people right there, it looks like maybe three people. Uh, if you scroll up, you can see the solar panels on... Uh, the bathrooms there there's a group of people there there's a few people further up the west rim trail so even though it's grainy quite a bit of detail now this image was a little bit difficult to pick a focal point because it's so windy that i couldn't really stop down as much as i wanted to i think this was taken at f22 which is relatively open for what i shoot but my focal point, again, I just threw it one third of the way in the scene, probably over here, somewhere around observation point. And if you go and compare the sharpest, the detail in the fo in focus area at 100%, you can see it's very sharp there. And then the closest to the camera was this little area. It's actually on Angel's Landing. You can see that it has not lost much sharpness there. So even shooting uh, at the open aperture of f22, I was still able to get tremendous sharpness throughout. Now, finally, one thing I want to show you is you can imagine the dynamic range, the sun just glaring on the left side of the canyon here, and then these areas thrown into uh, deep shadow on the right side of the canyon. But look, there is absolutely nothing blown over here and then when you go into the deep shadow areas you can see that i mean every bit of detail is captured you can see the road going up the canyon there so i love shooting black and white in these high contrast scenes so there is a comparison of what a flatbed scanner will do for three different types of four by five film now the last thing i want to show you is an image on 35 millimeter film. Now, like I was saying, it's not the uh, not the best scanner to use for 35 millimeter film, but you're going to get acceptable results. Let me find that really quick. Okay, so last thing I want to show you here is just a quick scan of some again self-developed black and white film. I love this picture of my daughter here. She loves to play in the sink and. We've got a, uh, a window, kind of a north facing window here. And I noticed the light coming in there while she was playing. I killed all the lights in the kitchen and got this really dramatic light here. This is shot on Delta 100. And let's see, again, I scanned it at 3200 DPI. That gave me an image file of, oh, hang on. Let me reset that. So if I put that at uh, 300 pixels per inch, it's going to give me a uh, size of 14 by 10, which is kind of a weird number, but again, it's just how I kind of haphazardly cropped out the film, uh, film areas. Now I have printed this up to 8 by 10 or 8 by 12, 
and got an acceptable result. But I'm going to zoom in here and you'll see just what a difference it makes. This was shot on an old Canon manual, uh, it's a Canon FT, a completely manual camera uh, from the 60s. And we zoom in at 100% and you're getting lots of grain there. There's really, the focus is on her. Um, it could be, the focus is probably on, it could be a little bit off because this was a manual focus camera. But um, you're not getting those super sharp details that we were getting on the 4x5 film. But, you know, this is not that bad. For 35mm film, I kind of meticulously flattened it. But, I mean, there's the water coming out of the sink. You can see pretty, uh, it's not the sharpest thing in the world, but um, pretty clearly the detail in the curls in her hair. And, I mean, again, the dynamic range, she's basically getting direct sun here, and this is thrown into deep shadow. And there's really nothing that's blown or clipped. So, um, love what Delta 100 does uh, in high contrast scenes. But, you know, honestly, not too bad for a 35 millimeter piece of film. So, I hope this helps. Again, watch Ben's videos. You're going to see that... Um, what the Epson can do is good, but there is nothing that competes with a drum scanned sheet of 8x10 film. With that being said, I believe that this Epson holds up very, very well. As long as you go through and flatten your film, uh, make sure you've done everything right uh, in camera to begin with. I've printed up to 30x40. I've got uh, that image from... Angel's Landing is actually on display at Knoxville's McGee Tyson Airport, uh, printed 24 by 30. I wouldn't go much larger than 24 by 30 because of the graininess on black and white film, but uh, really for you know a couple hundred dollars, if you can find them used, the Epson uh, 700, 800 series is a solid investment. And it's not going to get as much detail, as much dynamic range as a drum scan, but it's in a completely different price bracket. So hopefully this helped. If you had any questions about uh, what that scanner was capable of, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.